Hello, my lovely anatomist and physiologist, Michelle Glassier. Before we go any further in our conversation on reproductive system, it is important for us to stop and talk about what do we mean by biological sex and also how is biological sex determined? So I think that is the interesting question for us to start with. Biological sex is determined by multiple factors. So we have what we can talk about as chromosomes and genes. Okay chromosomes and genes. And so when we talk about chromosomes, we'll see that if you inherit two X chromosomes, we think about that as a typical female body type. And if you inherit one X and one Y, we think about this as a typical male body type. And the real important thing that we see located on that Y is a gene called the SRY gene or sex realizing factor and this triggers the development of testicular um, development during fetal development and so then this washes that developing fetus and testosterone and it's converting kind of our default structures that are typically female into what we think about as male structures. But we see it's not just a matter of what is your chromosome combination. There are at least 25 genes that are involved in determining sex. So there are at least 25 genes involved in determining sex in addition to the combination of the chromosomes that are inherited. We also see sex hormones are involved in the determination of biological sex. And this is important. It's not just the hormones that are released by the body, but you would also have to have the ability to respond to these hormones. So maybe your body is producing testosterone, but you don't have the receptors to respond to testosterone. So even though you're making this hormone, it's not going to look like you have that particular hormone. You see how that works? Um, and so this is super complicated. And the third aspect is going to be the reproductive anatomy. And remember, we have both internal and external reproductive anatomy. And very often when we have an infant born, we take a look at that external anatomy or do an ultrasound. We take a look at that external anatomy and we say, aha, I see a penis. So this is male, this is boy. And aha, I see a vulva. And so this is female, this is a girl. Right. And so then we go along and socialize our boys and our girls in different ways. And we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. When we talk about biological sex, then I don't know if it's fully appropriate, but but I think probably it's appropriate to think about it as a continuum. So on one end of the continuum, we have a typical male body type. And on the other end of the continuum, we're going to have a typical female body type, meaning that the chromosomes, the genes, the sex hormones, and the ability to respond to those hormones, both internal and external anatomy are all matching up with what we think of as typical male or typical female body type. And then we have in between, if you want to think of it in those terms, what is defined as intersex. And so these are individuals who have a combination of chromosomes or genes or sex hormones or reproductive anatomy that's somewhere intermediate, somewhere in between what we think about as these two extremes, the very classic male body type and the very classic female body type. And we think, oh, this is rare. I don't know any individuals who are intersex. And we see that, yeah, it's rare, but it's not that rare. 
is 1.6% of our population is intersex or one in 60 newborns that are intersex. And in some cases, you know, an individual might not know that they're intersex. It might not show out as, as it were on that external anatomy. Um, so these individuals may not be aware of this until, you know, maybe on center of puberty or maybe in the attempts to conceive offspring. This takes us to a related topic, which is gender. And for me growing up, I had this understanding that gender and sex were synonyms that we could use these terms interchangeably, meaning if you were born with a penis and declared a boy, then your gender was boy and your sex was a boy. Or if you were born with a vulva and declared as girl, then your gender was girl and your sex was girl, right? And really, you know, it started becoming part of my awareness maybe in the last, let's say, seven to 10 years, really more heavily part of my awareness, even just in the last five years. Um, and then really, you know, even fairly the last one to two years, this became something that I really started to, to think about. So if this is new for you, um, I'm still fairly new to this discussion as well, but it's a super important, super important discussion. When we talk about gender, as being different from biological sex, we see that it's composed of three dimensions. Three dimensions. And we're going to see that one component is your actual a body. So this would be your anatomy. This would be your chromosomes and genes. This would be your hormones and your hormone receptors, right? So very much this is the biological sex component. And again, this component very often determines how we're assigned um, at birth and also then how we're socialized in our culture. So again, when infants are born with penises, we see boy and we very much socialize that young human being in all the ways that are boy. And when we see vulva on our infant, we say, this is a girl. And we very much socialize that human in all the ways that we socialize our girls. And so that takes us to the next dimension, which is what is referred to as identity. And so this is our internal, internalized view of ourself, internalized view of ourself, right? And so this is not something that people can see, right? This is how we personally feel about ourselves inside. And the only way to know somebody's identity is to ask is to ask. So you can't see that by looking at their genitals. You can't see that by looking at their declaration on their birth certificate. And you can't see that even um, based on this third dimension, which is expression. So gender expression is more um, how we present, present ourselves. And this can be in our mannerisms, this can be in our speech patterns, this can be in our hairstyle, this can be in our clothing choices, this might be in the roles that we choose for ourselves, right? And so gender is this complex um, grouping of these three different dimensions, right? And again, when we talk about biological sex, that's just one dimension of what we're thinking about with gender. So you may be thinking to yourself, okay, um, this is interesting, but aren't there just like 
boys and girls? Aren't there just like women and men? And so when we talk about gender, we can think about people as fitting into uh, numerous categories. And I've heard some people say, okay, if there's 7 billion humans on the planet, there are 7 billion different genders on the planet. Because again, as we look at this identity piece, this is a very personalized, internalized view that we have for ourselves. When we talk about somebody who is cisgender, then what we're really saying is these three dimensions are matching up in a way that is, um, let's say, socially acceptable. So we're seeing the um, biological sex, so the external genitalia, the declaration on the birth certificate and all of that, matching up with how the person thinks about themselves internally, matching up with how they're expressing themselves within the context of how society expresses like boy or girl, woman or man. And so we do see cisgender is maybe a dominant type. We definitely see that cisgender is dominant in the culture of the United States. And if you've never really had to think about gender, then you're very likely to fall into this category of cisgender, where things have just always lined up for you. And it's not been something that you've had to super think about. Other folks fall into a category that we can refer to as transgender. And in the case of transgender, these are individuals where their dimensions maybe are not lining up. So perhaps the genitals and the declaration assignment on the birth certificate do not match up with either their identity or their expression. So very often when we're hearing the term transgender, this is somebody who's maybe assigned as birth as male based on the presence of a penis, but really identifies and perhaps expresses themselves um, from a woman's perspective, right? And so we'd see that you don't have to express um, in a way that matches with your internal identity. Remember, this is something you only know from questions, from, from conversation, from knowing the person. In addition, there are categories that are described as non-binary, and these are individuals that feel like they don't fit into either a cisgender or transgender category. So maybe they're not boy or girl, male or female, maybe, um, and I should hesitate because here I'm gonna use the terms male and female from a biological perspective to talk about sex of the body. So non-binary people, are feeling in some way outside of this binary of woman and man, of boy and girl. And this is just three possible gender identities where there are a whole lot more. If you find the question of gender, of biological sex, of intersex interesting, remember there are additional resources linked in the printable study guide, which is available through your video description. All right. As always, take care of yourselves and each other. And up next, we're going to get into how we produce gametes.